QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Record receipt of inventory with bill linked to PO or purchase order. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page in the view drop down. Noting we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off. Open windows open left side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's open up that profit and loss report. Change in the range 010123 to 123. We will customize it. Fonts and numbers, change in the font. Let's bring it on up to 14. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's open up the balance sheet in the reports. Company and financial. This time the big balance sheet. Customize it. Change in the range in 010123 to 123. Fonts and numbers to change to 14. 14. That's what we want. I'm going to open up the trusty TB trial balance as well in the reports drop down company, not company, accounting and taxes category trial balance ranging. It's changing 010123 to 123. Let's customize it to change the change the fonts and numbers. Let's bring it up to 16 for the TB. Okay. Trial. Yes. Okay. Trial balance is what I mean by TB. That's the setup process we do every time. Let's go back to the home page. Now in prior presentations, we entered a purchase order, remembering that the purchase order doesn't have anything to do with the financial statements, does not record anything to the financial statements. It being just a request for the inventory. We can track the purchase orders, however, by going to the vendor section here or vendors drop down up top, the vendor sec center here. And so you could do that by going to the vendors. We can imagine that we got a box of guitars that we ordered with the purchase order, which we didn't yet pay for, but uh, we requested because we have the control to do that in some cases, depending on the type of industry we are in. So in the new vendor fender down here, we see the open purchase order here. We can also see the purchase order by going to the transactions and going to the purchase orders. We can look at all purchase orders or possibly just the open purchase orders. There's the one we're assuming we received the guitars from. If I open it up, what did we order? Uh, SQ Squire guitars, 20 of them. We expect to have a box of 20 guitars now that we have received from the new vendor Fender. So let's go back on over to the home page then. Now note last time, last month, when we received the transactions, we recorded them and entered them into the system directly with a check. So we just want to emphasize the difference between the bill in form or the bill that might be used in common terms and the bill and checks within QuickBooks. If we entered the purchase order requesting 20 guitars, vendor Fender sends the guitars and we now receive them and in the box we have a bill. Remember, remember that that bill in the box could be called an invoice because if they were using QuickBooks over at Fender, they would create an invoice to bill us. When we receive it, we commonly would call it a bill, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we enter it into our QuickBooks system as a bill because as we did last time, we could just pay it off with a check. Right, so we could use a check form to pay the bill, but we this time we're going to do the accrual process entering a bill which is similar to just a bill here. But I'm just going to go to the next link in the chain, creating the bill from the purchase order. So we receive inventory with a bill. So I'm going to say okay, and then we'll type in Fender 
which is the new vendor and it's it's paraphrasing i'm paraphrasing it's saying hey we got an open purchase order so do you want to connect that and i'm going to say yes please that's the one let's check it off and say okay i'm going to close up the detail on the right hand side and so now it's populating based on the purchase order let's change the date i'm going to go for a lot of a lot of twos 02 22 23 02 22 23 and amount is pulled in for us the due the bill date is uh the 3 4 uh, 23 because we said it was let's say the terms here let's say are 30 days so now we've got it uh, moving out to 324 so this is the date that we input the bill this is then when it's going to be due we set the terms to be the 30 days we could then add a memo if we so choose notice at the bottom of the bill we've got expenses if it was going to simply an account category but we are using items because we not only wanted to go to the account of of inventory but also hit the sub ledger uh, properly tracking the inventory in a perpetual inventory system this information is pulling in from the purchase order as we have the box of guitars we would want to count them and make sure that they tie out to you know the 20 guitars that we should have we also assigned it to the customer which is uh, new music stuff because the customer asked us for guitars from this particular vendor which we didn't have set up yet it was a new vendor fender so we set them up and requested these guitars specifically for the customer which isn't necessary to enter the bill or the purchase order but will be useful because now this is billable meaning when we create an invoice or sales receipt we should be able to pull this information into it and and invoice our client so what's this going to do it's going to increase accounts payable because it's a bill it's going to increase inventory because that's what this item is assigned to do and it's going to increase the sub ledger of inventory for the 20 units of squire guitars let's save it let's close it let's check it out you've changed the terms i'm going to say yeah i know that and if i go to the balance sheet now balancing the sheets we can say okay we know that uh, the the inventory went up so let's go into the inventory and say there's the bill there's the 3360 if i go into that boom there it is closing it back out closing this back out the other side went to the accounts payable double clicking on the ap accounts payable there's the bill increasing the accounts payable representing a liability what we owe to a third party the new vendor fender that is closing it out we can see the sub ledger related to the accounts payable we can find that by going to the reports drop down we can go to the vendors and payable let's look at the vendor balance detail account and so now we can see here's the bill for for fender the total ap lines up to the 3360. normally we might not use this report as much because we could find the same information in the vendor center over here although the total isn't in the vendor center in other words i can go to the vendors i can sort the vendors by open balance vendors and there's fender right there we could see the detail we could see that now we have a bill and the purchase order if i go into the purchase order we can see we've received in full uh, from the purchase order here closing this back out and then we've got our bill outstanding we can also go to the transactions up top we can look at the purchase orders there's no more open purchase orders all purchase orders are here we can look at the bills as well we can look at all bills or simply the open bills which now we have that one bill for fender that we uh, need to be paying at some point in the future if i go back to the balance sheet we can also say okay the inventory should have changed it should go up by those 20 guitars i believe it was 20 reports drop down inventory let's look at the inventory valuation summary change the date 12 31 2, 3. and we can see there's our 20 squire guitars are on the books now we're now at the 9626 which should match what is on our balance sheet 9626 so the next thing we expect to happen would be that we're going to pay the bill and that would be just a normal process it's similar to us if we entered the bill this way we just entered in essence the same kind of bill form but we went in this track so it's up up here 
but next time we're going to pay the bill or at some point we'll pay the bill would be the next format or the next part of the cycle and there we can see the bill uh, here and we would use the pay bill form to do that and we might see that in a future presentation for now let's go to the trustee trial balance over here and we can see where we stand also just want to point out there was no impact on the profit and loss so we bought the inventory even if we paid cash for it it wouldn't go on the PL, so we didn't have any change note that you could run the PL just for one month instead of two say oh two oh one two three and so so we can kind of see one month instead of two months but again no no transaction here when will the inventory hit the PL, the profit loss the income statement when we sell it in the form of cost to get sold that will happen when we create an invoice or sales receipt now let's go to the trial balance which is running for the two months i put it for the full year but we only have two months worth of data you could check your numbers up here and see if everything ties out if not then try changing the date see if it's a date issue you can drill down on the data and go to the source document to make changes if necessary at the end of the data input for the second month we will be running transaction detail reports to further check our numbers